What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews back at it again with another hometown take. Today I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons. You see, Atlanta Hawks got a couple of days off. I'm gonna let them live, even though we all like talking about the Hawks. But we'll talk about them when they play the Sacramento Kings on Wednesday. In the meantime, I might even talk about them all. But in the meantime, it's time to talk some Falcons, because you already know it's mock draft season. And the Falcons probably, I mean, they could if they really wanted to. That's probably not in their bench interest to try to trade up and get like Aiden Hutchinson or Kevon Thibodeau because those guys are probably going like top three. But they could get Aiden Hutchinson's counterpart this season who was also a very effective pass rusher or one, you guessed it, David Ajabo. He will be right there at eight, I believe, and he could be the answer to the Falcons' problems when it comes to sacking the quarterback. We're going to get into it. I'm going to give you a scout report and how I feel about one David Ajabo. But before we do that, you already know we got to handle some business, so make sure you check out the first link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to a great draft. Also, check out the second link in my description box to subscribe to the Tough Calls podcast for me and girl Simone with the Spizzord are talking to your favorite former and current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, head coaches, all that good stuff. Listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share it out to your friends so they can do all the same thing. Like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. So, guys, let's get right into it. David Ajabo. First things first, initial reaction to him is that he is very raw still. He only played one year in high school. He only played one year at Michigan, really. He played one game in 2020, but he was stuck in Scotland for three months. He was trying to visit back home because he was born in Nigeria, spent a lot of time in Scotland as well, but he was stuck in Scotland for three months due to COVID and all that stuff in 2020. So only only played one game in 2020. They have a tackle, but only played one game, so he didn't play really one year in high school, moved to um, Nigeria, from to uh, move from Nigeria to the United States in 2007 to go to high school, played only one year of high school ball, played only one year in Michigan, so he's a very raw talent, still learning the game, but he is very, very good and has a very high upside. David Ajabo, 6'5", 250, good, good, good pass rushing. Um, height and weight. So like I said, one year starter at Michigan, only played one year in high school, but he was on the scout team for Michigan and he was named the 2019 scout team player of the year for the Michigan Wolverines. So that is good. He's a very hard worker. He's eager to learn. He was picking the brains of Quiddy Pay and other dudes that were there at, at Michigan and great pass rushers for Michigan um, back before he got his time to shine this past season. This past season, speaking of which, 13 games, 24 solo tackles, 11 assisted tackles for 35 total tackles, 11 sacks, 3 pass deflections, and a fumble recovery. Great stats this year next to Aiden Hutchinson. And, you know, I know because even my initial reaction was, oh, well, did him have the Aiden Hutchinson on the side of him help him out? This, that, and the third. Actually, no. David Ajabo actually pushed a lot of quarterback, uh, pushed a lot, pushed the quarterback, the opposing quarterback, a lot of times to Aiden Hutchinson to help Aiden Hutchinson get the sack. David Ajabo's numbers wasn't a result of having an Aiden Hutchinson on, this, on uh, the opposite side. David Ajabo put in work, and he is a great talent himself. Like I said, Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo helped each other out. But let's get into the positives first. Then we'll get into, you know, things he needs to work on. Because like I said, he is a very raw talent. And he's still learning the game. He still has a lot of things he needs to work on. So the positives for David Ajabo. He's got the natural raw talent. He's got the speed. He's got the nice hip bend. He can get up under and get by offensive tackles with his speed and explode back into the pocket and get to the quarterback. So he's got that speed. He can beat any offensive tackle on the outside. So that is good. Like I said, explosive athlete. He's got a nice little stutter step. He's got some nice moves where he kind of fakes it inside, goes back outside, kind of like a a fire, a fire or an ice pick, um, that sort of thing. So 
Great brand, flexibility, can get around the corner and explode back into the pocket. All that is great and well. He's got decent length at, with that 6'5 height. Um, Draft Network compares him to Robert Quinn. So, very good comparison. Robert Quinn obviously had a very good career, a long career. Like I said, he has that eagerness to learn, too. He's know, he knows, you know, he's new to the game, and he's trying to figure out the game and, you know, how he can become the best version of himself. So, all that good, is, all that stuff is good. Um, he's got above average leg and leg drive and balance. He can fight through contact and remain on his path to the quarterback. So, it's good. He doesn't give up. He doesn't get beat. He's strong and... He gonna get to the quarterback one way or another. He gonna keep driving them legs. Gonna keep turning. He ain't gonna throw them off balance. If you're an opposing offensive tackle, he gonna find his way to that QB and get him down. Point blank. Period. Now, as we go into the negatives, there is a one more positive. His hand use has improved throughout the season, which is a good sign for his future development. But his hands still could use some work because he does not pack a major punch. In his hand so his hand uses could be better his hand fighting his hand counters could be a lot better but like I said they got better throughout the season so that's good because you could tell he's still developing he's still learning and that development is there you know he's not just getting the numbers off his raw talent he's actually improving learning and it's showing on the field that he's working to get better and he actually is getting better for every game that he plays out there Bull rushing is not in his arsenal. And this is kind of the biggest red flag to me because I feel like all the great pass rushers can just bully you and bull rush you. And if you're an offensive tackle, you gonna, you gotta be scared of this dude because yes, he can get to the outside and get around to his speed, but if he wants to, he can just mm, put his hands on you, put his paws on you, and just push you back into the quarterback. Let's think of all the dudes that get to the quarterback. Aaron Donald, he can do whatever he wants with you. He can hit you with a swim move. He can straight bull rush you back into the quarterback, or he's got the speed to get around you. Grady Jarrett, now he is a defensive tackle, not really a pass rusher, but again, he's got multiple moves. He's got a swim move. He can bull rush you. You know, he's got, he ain't got speed, but you get what I'm going at. TJ Watt, 22 and a half sacks, more than the freaking Atlanta Falcons this year. He can get on the outside with the speed. He's got hand moves. He's got counter moves, and he can straight bull rush you if all else fails. I feel J.J. Watt, same thing. All the premier pass rushers in the NFL, I feel like they've all had at least a bull rush. You know, we've seen the guys who just had speed and couldn't really power back and didn't really have a bull rush. Nick Beasley. They might have one good year, but they're probably going to wash after that. I feel like you need a bull rush. And I'm not saying David Ajabo can't develop a bull rush, even though, you know, the scouting report said, you know, he will rarely win as a power rusher in the NFL. So they could be wrong, but it is a red flag. You know, if scouts are seeing that and thinking he never can win in the NFL as a power rusher, that does concern me because I feel like you need a bull rush to be a truly, truly effective pass rusher in the league. Now, that maybe David Ajabo doesn't need it. I feel like uh, pass rushers do, but maybe he doesn't. And maybe, like I said, scouting reports are wrong all the time, or, you know, you know, maybe he doesn't have it now, but again, he's another raw talent. He's still trying to learn. He gets stronger, and he, he can develop that in the NFL. So, we'll see, but that is the biggest red flag to me, because I feel like we need to bull rush. We need to be able to just mm, manhandle a dude and push him back, period. So, We'll see if that bull rushing, you know, becomes a problem for him in the NFL. And another thing that has improved but still needs work is his run defense. Um, a lot of times he's too slow on his reads. He doesn't engage on his reads fast enough. So, you know, he might see something, but he's a little too late to see it. He might be a little bit behind the play, and that doesn't help him make the play, or he's late making the play because he saw it too late. So his run defense need to get better. His anchor wavers at times. And like I say, he's not always quick to engage on the play as he needs to be. And his general awareness needs some work. I think that honestly is just going to come with reps. You know, his awareness and understanding of the game is going to come. He's only played, he probably, his entirety, he's probably played less than 50 games. Like, he's, pro he's played in probably less than 50 football games. Because you play in what, at the most, if you go all the way to the championship, you play like... 14 or 15 games. You got 10 regular season games, 
and he might play 14 or 15 games in high school. And in his career, he's played 25, including the one game he played his junior, um, his sophomore year. He played 24 games this year. Is that right? Or is he gonna play 25 in his 25 games total? Oh no, he's only played in. He's only played in like 14 games total. Excuse me. So he's played in like he's played in like 30 games, 30 total football games in his career. Something like that. So I think that general awareness and understanding of the game is going to come as he plays more football games. He's still very, very new to this game. He's only played two seasons of football, if you really boil it down. So the general awareness and not firing off in his reads as quickly, I think that's going to come with experience. So I'm not too worried about that. He's got the talent. He's got the explosiveness. He's got the speed. And, you know, I think the power will come. I think guys always get stronger once they get to the league. You know, so I I think I would like David Ajabo, but he would be a project and Falcons fans would have to be maybe a little bit patient with him. He could burst onto the scene, but, I, you know, I don't think, I'm not sure if he would be a dude that makes an impact right away. He could be a dude that could be a project. And that's why I'm not exactly sure, you know, if, because depending on how quickly the Falcons want to get back, you know, I don't know if they want a dude who might be a little bit bit of a project in, in David Ajabo because, like I said, he's going to have to play some more games. He's going to have to adjust to the NFL. Um, he's going to need to get that bull rush. You know, he's going to have to adjust to the speed of the NFL because he won't can't win solely with just his speed, I don't think, you know, in at the NFL level. So I think David Ajabo would be a little bit of a project pick. Um... So, I mean, we'll see. He could end up being great. We, we never know. So, it just, and, 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 you know, still got a combine to look at. But I just don't know how much of an impact David Ajabo would be in his first season. Um, as far as things that I, I've read and looked at and watched on film, i just not sure. It just seems like he'll be a project. I feel like there could be more ready players that we could take at eight that can make a major impact for you at and start, maybe even start right away. So I just don't know if David Ajabo, I don't know if we have the time to work on that project for David Ajabo when there could be ready dudes, maybe at a different position at eight. You know, we could, we get Derek Stingley Jr. who could be pretty much NFL ready right away. And no college, and no, no, no draft pick is gonna be NFL ready right, right, right away. They're gonna have to make a little bit of adjustment, but Derek Stingley Jr. is a dude who could start right away. Kyle Hamilton, if he falls us, is a dude who could probably start right away. You know what I mean? And David Ajabo, he's giving very rotational, you know, to start his career. Just because of the simple fact he's only played two seasons of football overall, like less than around 30 games in his total football career. So it's going to take time for him to develop and truly blossom into what he really could be. Again, he could storm on the scene, scene fast. He could be a fast learner. I don't know. But at number eight, we got to hit on this number eight pick. And I think he has to be a starter for you right away. And I just don't know if David Ajabo is a starter right away. So we'll see. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But like I said, he's got the explosiveness, got good height, got good weight. He's got the length. He's got all the raw natural abilities. He just got to, you know, like get, understand football up here a little bit more and work on his hands a little bit more. So he just has to understand the game of football better, get some techniques a little bit better because right now he's really just kind of going on his raw talents. He's getting better. He's got better at Michigan. Some things have improved. But again, he's really raw, really green, and I just don't know how ready he will be right away if we do draft him. Don't know if he'll be a starter, rotational guy or what. So we'll see though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. How are you feeling about David Ajabo? Should the Falcons go after him? If, you know, if Aiden Hutchinson is gone, Kavon Thibodeau is gone, you know, maybe even if, uh, what's his name? Carl, um, the guy out of Purdue. Oh, now I got to look it up. Hold on, let me see. I'm going to get his name. I feel bad not saying that. But, you know, he's supposed to be the next best after Aiden Hutchinson and Kevon Thibodeau. Let me go to the NFL my draft real quick. Hold on. I'm going to get his name because I can't remember it. Should have looked it up before him, but it's all good. Let's see. Dude, dude, where's his name? Where's his name? I'm going to find it. And this, uh, actually, it's funny. In this mock draft, I just pulled up the CBS. David Ajabo is actually mocked to us. Um... At number eight, so hey, there you go. 
Let me see if I can find. Where is this dude? Dang, where y'all got him going? There he is, George uh, Carl Karloftis. Hope I said it right. George Cos uh, Karloftis, the edge rusher from Purdue. They say, you know, he's supposed to be maybe the third best edge rusher in front of David Ajabo, but in this CBS mock draft, and you know, mock drafts or whatever, they got him going 17th overall to the Los Angeles Chargers. So, I don't know. Would you like Carl Loftus over David Ajabo? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells too so you can get a notification every time I drop some new heat. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, again, Check out the first link in my description box to buy me coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to a great draft. Also, check out the second link in my description box to subscribe to the Tough Calls podcast. Me and your small lead this Bizzler are talking to your favorite former current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, head coaches, all that good stuff. Listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to it, share it out to your friends so they can do all the same things. David Ajabo, how do you feel about number eight? You like it? Do you not? If Aiden Hutchinson is gone, if Kevon Thibodeau is gone, and you have to select a pass rusher, would you go with Jabo or are you going George Karloftis? Again, hope I'm saying his name right. But let me know what you guys think. Appreciate you guys watching. And until I talk to you guys next time, stay true to Atlanta, believe in Atlanta, go Falcons. Peace.